forward kinematics is a way to get from the base of the robot to the tip. So if you know all of the joint angles, how can you find the position of the robot's claw? Given the joint positions, find the end effector pose. So this describes a manipulator's motion irrespective of force and torque, purely kinematics, position, velocity, acceleration. We assume that each joint in the chain of a robot has one degree of freedom, so it can move in one direction. Otherwise, you need to make it two joints. So for example, a motor will rotate around one axis. A cylinder will move in and out. So if you have something like a ball and socket joint, you would need to make that actually be multiple joints for the math to work out easily. So to do forward kinematics, we start with joint positions and calculate the XYZ position and roll pitch yaw orientation of the end effector. For serial manipulators, this is pretty straightforward. The number of links is the number of joints plus one. That's because the ground or the base counts as link zero. So go through, number all of the joints one to n. On a standard six axis arm, you will have six different joints. And number the links zero through n. So the base link plus each one, so on until the tip. Joint I drives link I. So joint one is between links zero and one. Joint two is between links one and two, and so on. Then you attach one coordinate frame to each link, usually on its joint. You can see here joint one is the vertical joint. Then joint two moves this arm. Joint three makes this arm rotate. Joint four, spins longitudinally. Joint five moves the same way that joints two and three do, just for this end. And then joint six spins the wrist. Usually the z-axis goes along the joint and the x-axis and y-axis are perpendicular to it. For example, looking at this Scara robot, we can see it has four joints, so we will need five coordinate frames one for the ground and then one for each joint. So joint one here is vertical. We can see this is a revolute joint. Joints two and joints four are also revolute. You can see their axes. And then joint three is prismatic. So this pushes up and down. Now here we have a coordinate frame on each joint with Z pointing in the direction that the, of the joint's axis and X points perpendicular. The exact location of the coordinate frames is not quite so important. Um, you just need to make sure that there's at least one coordinate frame on each joint and the origins of the coordinate frames should be relevant to whatever you're trying to calculate. So we definitely need one at the very beginning, the base. We definitely need one at the tip and then we need some in between if we want to know where those joints of the robot are too. There are three methods for calculating forward kinematics. For simple robots, you can use the basic method where you can pretty much just look at it and write down the answers. Then for more complicated robots, there are two methods, denavit hartenberg parameters, which is making a table that relates each joint coordinate frame to the one before it. And then the product of exponentials method, which relates each coordinate frame to the base frame. 